This is the Against the Current podcast. Against the Current is a faith-based counseling ministry that helps individuals, couples, and families experience emotional, mental, relational, and spiritual transformation through biblically-based principles with one-on-one counseling, workshops, and seminars. If you want to find out more, head on over to atcmcounseling.com. Hi there, Katya here, and we're back with our second podcast. Uh, So glad you can join us. Um, Today we're talking about something that I'm very passionate about, which is the basic explanation of what I've been doing, uh, counseling people one-on-one, which is uh, temperament therapy. And actually done seminars also to kind of explain what that is about. And I feel so strongly about this, and um, it has helped so many people. So I am certified with the National Christian Counselors Association, and they have been doing this since 1983. And before that, there was over a decade of research. And it's just amazing to me how a test that has, uh, it's an assessment that we first do uh, to kind of figure out what somebody's temperament is. And there are 50 questions, very, very specific questions, a little on the strange side in many ways, Um, but it is amazingly accurate and detailed. So um, to me, um, it's just, it it just gives me such a powerful tool to help somebody um, to understand themselves and to start into more cognitive therapy which is again you know like I mentioned last week that's what I do and very passionate about that so um, temperament therapy my goodness um, to me I think it's the missing link and really understanding oneself and getting that peace that surpasses understanding that we all crave and um, it's you know when we become a Christian for example I am a Christian again um, the Bible says that the fruits of the Spirit are love joy peace patience kindness gentleness uh, self-control all those things are um, make it you know once we understand our temperament and work with our temperament um, it just makes it more possible to achieve all those characteristics and it's so exciting uh, when I do an assessment with someone that I'm counseling and they finally come face to face with details of who they are and um, And I tell them it's kind of like looking at yourself in the mirror, your soul in the mirror. And um, it's really exciting. Now, when we uh, do a temperament assessment, we're focusing on the soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And when we um, do the temperament assessment, it breaks it down into those three areas. Your mind is a completely different area than your will. Those are two different things. Um, And your emotions. So it breaks it apart and gives us a lot of details. And believe it or not, it's very accurate uh, when people, um, you know, do the assessment. Now, sometimes they might be like, "Um, I don't know. I'll have to think about that one. You know, like, for example, um, you know, you have this fear of rejection and they might think well no I've I'm good you know then I usually tell people take a few days and just think about it and we'll meet again and talk about that and most of the time probably 99% of the time they come back and like you know I understand that now when we do a temperament assessment this is very very key It's not a thing where you look at your characteristics, which there are a lot, okay, gives you a lot of information. It's not a thing where, oh, well, that's who I am, okay, so I'm very strong-willed and, you know, I don't care about what people think about me and I just step on people and, you know, I'm not people-oriented or whatever. 
This is an analysis of who you are so that you can overcome your weaknesses. You can get past your weaknesses. We're not going to sit there and say, well, that's just who I am. Oh, well, people are just going to have to deal with who I am. No, no, no. We uh, use that as a tool to improve. And that's what it is because we all have strengths and we all have weaknesses and our weaknesses are just a way for us to look in the mirror like if you looked in the mirror and you're about to go into a meeting and you have you know tar you know ink on your face tar that's a little you know that's a little much but ink on your face of course you would go like oh my goodness let me get rid of that let me you know fix myself up so i can go into the meeting so when we do a temperament assessment you're looking into a mirror and you then that's when you have to go okay so if I have this particular weakness like for example um, I'm not very direct that's a that's a actual uh, characteristic of some temperaments um, then let's talk about how we can be more direct more bold more just communicate what you want some people believe it or not have a huge problem with that um, so this is something that needs to be overcome because we can't go through life being indirect and manipulating people and, you know, doing all this stuff. So you just have to recognize what you need to work on. Um, just a quick, um, a quick explanation of what temperament is. There is sometimes confusion in that area. Um, your personality, which most people are familiar with, is just a mask. So it's a mask. It's who you portray yourself to be to the world. And it's developed from childhood based on our experiences, based on our environment. Um, we, of course, start with our temperament and then we make, develop this mask that, you know, sometimes there's abandonment, rejection, abuse or whatever that also plays a part in the personality that we develop. Now, the temperament is who you really are on the inside. It's um, it's your genetic inborn makeup. So you can't deny it. You can't uh, hide it forever. You can't run away from it. It's who you really are. So you have to eventually come to grips with it. And um, especially when there is trauma or emotional dissonance, you know, mental dissonance, and there's something that needs to be worked on, um, then it's good to start there to figure out what are the characteristics that we're starting with? What did God give you when you were born? Because you can tell, you know, when you look at babies, you can tell they're very different. <laughs> all of us are very different. And we all have a very unique identity. Um, and you know what? All of us have strengths, like I said, and weaknesses. And we can work with those to make a beautiful identity of who we were supposed to be, who we're supposed to be, and the gifts and talents that we each have to accomplish amazing goals, to be who we're supposed to be. Um, and a lot of times our weaknesses hold us back. And this is a great way to figure out, oh my goodness, okay, I need to figure out how, you know, especially in relationships. I need to figure out how to fix these things, how to overcome these particular weaknesses. So it's a great tool to have. I recommend, if even if you think you never would need or want counseling, uh, which by the way, is a great thing, uh, not just because I am a counselor, I think anybody could use just maybe like three or four sessions of just figuring out certain things about life, correct ways of thinking because all of us have distorted toxic thinking um, and it's a great way to kind of help you launch into you know who you're really meant to be so I suggest it and sometimes we kind of get off track in life you know maybe you're having family issues relational issues with our spouse or work related issues hey it's a great way to just get in there and get a little bit of counseling just a sidebar there um, but it's important to figure out exactly who we are um, from the get-go and um, you know from there it's a beautiful journey um, 
you know, when someone is having issues and there are so many things going on, especially now with anxiety and depression, um, there is a way out. There is an answer. And, you know, like I think I said this last time, but depression, anxiety and those things, they're not diseases. It's not a disease. It's a, it's a signal that something is wrong. Something is wrong with our thinking. And, um, you know, one of the best keys, one of the best ways to figure out what's wrong is to start first with our temperament, who we really are. And what another thing that the temperament assessment does is it helps us to identify needs. So all of us have needs. It's different for every person. You know, one person might be um, very social. They love people and they need that. And they need that to feel rested and to feel peaceful. You know, they just need to be interacting with people and they gain energy from that interaction. Other people need time alone. They need time to think. Um, they need time to meditate and they don't need to be in a job where you're interacting with people all day long because that would just zap all the energy that they have and they could not, you know, it would create anxiety in many different levels. So it's important to, and that's just a couple of examples there. So a need for a person that, who needs to spend time alone would be, okay, I need time every day to schedule time where it's just me, not even the family or anybody else, just me. You know, go for a walk, go for a jog, just sit in your room, whatever it is that you need and just think. Um, if you're not getting that, then it can cause a slew of problems. Um, anyways, all of us have needs that need to be addressed. And if they're not being addressed, then it can lead to other issues. Um, and unfortunately, we see a lot of people just, you know, throwing, I've heard some people say this in the past, you know, just throwing mud against the wall, hoping that it will stick. I don't know, um, you know, if that's too common anymore, but I heard that a long, long time ago. And a lot of people go through life that way. They're just, just throwing mud against the wall and just hoping that something sticks. Um, whereas there are answers in every area of life. And so when we do temperament therapy, it's just a foundation to proper counseling, which again is not just for someone who has issues, you know, who has anxiety, who has depression, who's suffering from addictions or what have you. It's just someone who's trying to get guidance on the best path to take. Whether you're starting out in life as an adult whether you're getting married, which I do do a lot of counseling for, you know, premarital counseling for couples that are about to get married, or whether you just kind of like got off track and you're in midlife, you know, 40s, 50s, and you just need a boost, it's just the perfect thing. Um, anyways, this is just a very quick analysis of temperament therapy. And again, I cannot emphasize enough, I think temperament is the missing link to having true peace. Um, you know, when I was starting out in my early 20s, one of my biggest quests was to have peace, to have peace within me, within myself. Um, because if you don't have that, then what good is it if you have success out in the world, um, in what you do, and you know, having kids or whatever, whatever it is you're doing, if you don't have peace in here, if you're not 100% okay with who you are and what you're doing and in your situation in life, but even that, it's beyond that. It's true peace in here and in here. Um, then you have to understand who you are because you're different from your spouse. You're different from your sibling. Here's another example. You could have grown up with a sibling that is very strong-willed, very outgoing, very, you know, the popular one and all that stuff. And you might be 
you know, more quiet, more laid back, and a little bit more insecure. And you could have grown up thinking, I'm not as good as she is or as he is, and I have to compete all the time, and I have to compare myself, and I'm always trying to play catch up. When just understanding that your sister or brother is wired completely differently than you are, um, he or she have their weaknesses. There, there are things that they're dealing with. And you know what? Uh, you might have a gentle spirit. You know, you might have a servant heart, which they don't have. So you have to learn to capitalize on that. And that's a beautiful thing. You just have to look at it, learn about who you are, look at it, and then be okay with that. And, you know, work on that, build on that foundation to make an amazing life for yourself with who you are. It's okay to be the quiet one, laid back, but you get a lot of stuff done and you serve people. Anyways, that's just another example there. It's very important to launch in whatever stage of life. You could be 70. I've counseled 72. I think the last one she was 72 years, years old. And she was just in a new stage of life and she just wanted some counseling. Uh, just finished up a couple of weeks ago. Um, Anyway, whatever stage of life that you're in, this is so beneficial. Uh, I definitely recommend it. And um, if there are any questions, please feel free to um, post them. Uh, contact me and you can see the uh, contact information. Uh, you can go to the website. Uh, all of that is available for you. So I hope everyone has an awesome day and remember to think positive and there is always an answer. Whatever problems you're going through, or even if you don't have any problems, uh, there's uh, always an answer, and there's always a better way. All right, you guys have an awesome day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can also follow us on Facebook at Against the Current Ministries and on Instagram at Katya C. Mills.